we would like to extend our welcome to Lakovsky family and your shiny faces, especially the oldest child. We are told in Samuel and First Samuel chapter one that Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord. In Luke chapter two, verse twenty-two, we read that Mary and Joseph brought their baby Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to be present, present him before the Lord. In the same way, the parents, Lykowski family, today bring their son Timothy, presenting first themselves and then their son before the Lord our God, according First Samuel. Chapter 1, verse 27 and 28, it reads, For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me a petition which I ask him of him. Therefore also have lent him to the Lord, as Lord as he, as long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. I believe this is a prayer that Svetlana uh, was praying before and God granted her son. Proverbs 22, 6, it reads, Train up your child, a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I like the verses from Joshua as well. Joshua 22, 6, as we're talking today about Joshua, he says very clear, he expressed his vow. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on another side of the flood, or the gods of Amorites in whose land ye dwell. And the main important part, uh, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. I want to, I want to bring, uh, remind uh, Lykovsky and all of us here and from Psalm 127 verses 1 through 5. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. Verse 3. Slow children are heritage from the Lord. Verse 4, as the error, arrows are in the hands of mighty men, so the children of the youth. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 7. O he, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I want now to... As uh, Lekowski family to come here on my left here, I'll ask them some questions, and you're going to be a witness for them. Also, I will ask the congregation some question too. Parents, by committing forward, uh, therefore, uh, before God and His people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate your yourself and your son Timothy to the Lord? If so. Please respond, we do. Very good. Very good. Having freely, uh, having come freely, I ask now that you enter into the following commitment so that Timothy may walk in the abundant, abundant life that Christ offer. Do you vow by God's help to encourage through praise and connection? in their efforts to raise a child in the fear of the Lord and uphold them in prayer and in anything should happen to parents to us to assure responsibility to help the child receive our Lord's guidance and instruction. Are you promising? You do. You do. Very good. 
Finally, I would like to ask congregation, the church, to make a vow as well. What would be your vow? There is an old proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. Parents have first responsibility, but parents need the help and support of the community. So, I direct my questions now to the church. By being present in God's house today, do you hereby declare yourself to the children of God because you trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sin and the gifts of eternal life? If this is true, please respond yes or no. Would you pray for them, for this family? Yes, yes we do. Yes. Very good, very good. Parents, I wanted you bring, uh, to bring five brief points for you to consider as like a blueprint for your, you already start walking from now on. I do rem believe you know some of them, we will refresh them again. Parents, number one, make church a priority over all extracurricular activities. Sport are important, family is important, but parents uh, the, the church must be number one. Parents, examine your, your friends, your habits, and your hobbies. Are they going to help you or your children or your children to model Jesus? All your surroundings should not be put above church. Point number two. Parents, don't certain, center your life around kids. This maybe sounds a little bit tricky, what we're talking. Do not Center your life around your kids. This is rather controversial subject that often ends. We should always love our children and welcome them as additional to the family, but they should never be a central focus of your life. If you are committing to raising your children in a Christ-centered home, it's pretty hard to do what when the child's trying to take a, a lot of your attention. But if you commit your life or make it Christ-centered, then it shouldn't be a problem. Point number three, parents put your marriage above kids. Sounds also a little bit controversial. But some parents, some mom or dad, forget their responsibility and they focus on children. Your marriage is first and children are second. Parents work for for and on your marriage daily make it your second priority in your life behind your relationship with with the lord lord marriage children that's how it goes number four parents commit first and foremost to your relationship with god this is the priority number one learn who god is and how much he loves you and point number five parents make your home a full-time ministry that your children will learn from you, not from someone else, who God is and how we should serve. Do you have any question or question or concern? Brief. No. Good. Then we will have a special prayer. And I invite also children who are already a little bit older than Timothy. You are welcome to come and we will ask uh, blessings from above upon this child and all other children for, uh, to, from God to be with them and guide them and protect them. Those who wants to come, you are welcome to come. If I may have a child. Ooh. That was a long ago I had this experience. We will kneel and I will invite, invite church to stand up. Our Heavenly Father, we kneel down before your presence in this very solemn special occasion. Lord, we thank you for this little creature, for Timothy, that you brought up to this earth. We thank you for parents. More important, Lord, we dedicating him now to thee, Lord. We're looking forward for your protection, for your guidance for him, Lord, for your influence. We're praying that you would be above and beyond him. 
We're praying, Lord, for parents as well, that they would be a perfect example, just as Joseph and Mary was for their son Jesus, as Anna, as we read today. We're praying that they would have a well-organized, ordained family that many people around them can learn how heaven looks. We're praying, Lord, for forgiveness of our sins, especially we're praying for parents. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray all these things. Amen. Amen.